Mount Vernon was the beloved home of George and Martha Washington. Inside the house, there are 21 rooms and it sits on 8,000 acres of land. George's father, Augustine, originally built the home in 1726, and his half-brother Lawrence was the first of the family to live in the estate. George soon inherited the home and continued building it to make it the large mansion it is today. George Washington's late wife, Martha Washington, was one of the wealthiest widows in all of Virginia. Before her marriage to George, Martha was married to Daniel Custis. They went on to have four kids together. Unfortunately, Martha was left a widow at age 25. Since Martha was so wealthy, she bought over 100 slaves to take to Mount Vernon. George Washington was very influenced by European architecture and landscaping. When the mansion was left to him, George immediately started innovating and redesigning. He added two more floors to the house and even bought more land surrounding the Potomac. This is the new room. It is called this because it is not only the biggest room in the mansion, but it was also the last addition to the house. If you look above the doors, you will notice two paintings of waterways. Not only was George Washington a founding father, but was also an investor in canals. The West Parlor was considered the best place in the house to George Washington. Visitors would usually use this room to wait for a Washington to come greet them. At one point, John Hancock, James Madison, and George Mason all met in this room to discuss important information about the future of our country. Not only has there been famous visitors during George Washington's time period, but also hundreds of years later, many well-known people have visited to remember our first president. People such as John F. Kennedy, Hillary Clinton, the Queen of England, and even Martha Stewart all have visited Mount Vernon. The central passage is the entryway into the Washington's home. In the central hall, you will find the key to the Bastille, given to Washington by the Marquis de Lafayette in 1790. Washington had a special relationship with Marquis de Lafayette, and even was said to have treated him like a son. A guest room at Mount Vernon is named after him because he visited so often. At the central passage, there would always be a slave on lookout for any upcoming horses and carriages. When you were invited in, depending on status, you would be told which parlor you could wait in. Whether you were well known or just a traveler, anyone could stay at Mount Vernon. Washington's house always had rooms available. Many of Martha's family stayed at the mansion. There is even a bedroom named after Martha Washington's grandchild, Nellie Custis. The small dining room is part of the original house and was renovated during the Revolutionary War in 1775. The study was George Washington's private room. Nobody was allowed in the room without his invite. This room was also used for bathing and dressing purposes. In this room, he used his quiet time to write reports and letters. The Washington's bedchamber was Martha Washington's sanctuary, where she wrote letters to friends and family and planned her schedule. George Washington also died in this room of a severe throat infection on December 14, 1799. The kitchen has three workrooms for meal preparation and even has a loft above the kitchen for the cook or housekeeper. There was also a room for washing dishes and a below ground cooler for meat. The kitchen is also detached from the rest of the house so it would not wake up the guests or even the Washingtons themselves. The garret chambers were rooms that were extensions in the mansion starting in the 1750s. Martha Washington spent most of her time up here after her husband's death. The Mount Vernon Ladies Association bought the house in 1858 and still runs and owns it to this day. The Mount Vernon Ladies Association is the oldest women's patriotic society in the U.S. Its goal is to preserve and show importance to the Mount Vernon mansion. Mount Vernon sits on a large hill overlooking the Potomac River. George Washington was born in, surveyed the land, and spent most of his life within the Potomac Basin. So this is George and Martha Washington's old vault, also known as the old tomb, and this is where the Washingtons were buried when they died, but George Washington gave strict instructions that they were going to build a new vault or a new tomb in 1831. This is the new tomb that was built after 1831. The two tombs you see here are George and Martha Washington's. Above the new tomb, the sign reads, within this enclosement lies the remains of George Washington. To this day, both Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts honor George Washington by laying wreaths out every morning and even having a moment of silence for him.
At Mount Vernon, Washington created a 16-sided barn for growing wheat, which was his most important cash crop. Washington used Mount Vernon for testing farming techniques. To help with wheat farming, George Washington had at least 100 slaves working per day. What you see here are the slave quarters. Washington was a slave owner for 56 years, and he inherited slaves at 10 years old from his father. His views on slavery were constantly changing, but he made sure to set them all free before he passed away in 1799. The slave memorial at Mount Vernon was designed by students attending Howard University. It was opened on September 21, 1983. The memorial is located 50 yards southwest of George and Martha's tomb. Legend says that the African Americans buried there were buried with their feet towards the Potomac River as a desire to return back to Africa. Most of the graves at the slave memorial are either unmarked or unknown. Those thought to be buried are William Lee, George's personal servant during the Revolutionary War, and West Ford, who worked as a manager for the Washingtons, who lived in Mount Vernon after George and Martha. Both Lee and Ford were free African Americans at the time of their deaths. Mount Vernon is said to have been visited by 6 million people per year. George Washington's mission when building Mount Vernon was to make all who stayed and visited there comfortable and inspired. George Washington has opened his house and land to many, proving that another mission of his was to promote hospitality to all. Ever since 1858, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association has honored George Washington's wishes.